I'm going to give you an easy step-by-step -step way to scan a typical or normal carotid artery. If you already have had some textbook learning and some formal training, this video will definitely be practical and make things click for you. The first thing you need to do when you are learning a new exam type is to understand why you are examining that organ. With carotid ultrasounds, the patient may have double vision, other stroke symptoms, or asymmetrical arm blood pressures. The purpose of performing a carotid ultrasound is to find out if there's any obstruction in the blood flow to the brain, the face, or even the arms. The vascular surgeon's main concern, though, is the blood flow to the brain through the internal carotid artery. So, you should be constantly asking yourself, is there any plaque or narrowing in the vessel that is so severe that it is altering the blood flow patterns? Now, every facility's protocols are different. So you guys let me know if my protocol that I'm showing you guys is different from the pro protocol of the facility at which you work. Let's get started. I usually get the patient to turn their head to the opposite direction from the side that I'm scanning and most facilities require you to get transverse images. So that's where we're gonna start. I like to do that first by starting at the base of the neck, the notch of the transducer facing yourself. So this little arrow indicates the direction of your notch on your transducer, and I have the corresponding ultrasound image over here. This is where your transducer should be the carotid artery should look like a circle in the center of your image. Now, do not, I repeat, do not image the internal jugular vein as the carotid artery. I have had to follow up on carotid imaging that was really of the internal jugular vein. Not cool. The IJV will expand and, and collapse as the patient is breathing. Also, the internal jugular vein is usually more anterior and compressible, meaning you can push down and collapse the walls of the vein. However, the carotid artery will be pulsating or bouncing up and down. Now, you can take your image here or you can do a Cine loop, depending on what your facility requires. To do that Cine loop, you would scan from inferior to superior. Make sure you include the bifurcation and any plaque in the bulb, and then scan back inferior. Next, we will move superiorly on the neck and image the mid common carotid artery. Next, we will move more superior on the neck and image the distal common carotid artery. It should still be looking round. I usually scan up to the carotid bulb where I see the vessel appears as an oval, then back inferiorly to where it appears as a circle again. That is where I image the distal common carotid artery. Next, I image the carotid bulb where the artery appears as an oval. Then move more superiorly, and then I image the bifurcation where that oval turns into two separate circles. Now, this is where it gets tricky for many people differentiating the ICA from the ECA. The ECA, the external carotid artery, will be on the side closest to the face, the patient's face, generally speaking. Not always, but generally speaking. So, in school, I learned that the acronym ECA has most of the same letters in the word face. So that will help you remember if you haven't learned that, that mnemonic already. And take note that the ECA is not always going to be on the right side of the image. This is only the case when you are scanning the right carotid system. However, when you scan the left carotid system, the ECA will typically be on the left side of your image. There are other ways to tell the difference between the ICA and the ECA when scanning in transverse. The ICA will demonstrate more constant color filling on color Doppler whereas the ECA will be flashing in color. Lastly, the ICA is often larger in diameter than the ECA. I'll dive more into the differences between the ICA and ECA waveforms later. 
Now, let's start at the base of the neck in sagittal with the notch pointing towards the patient's head. We are going to take a longitudinal view of the proximal common carotid artery. First, you will take a 2D image and then a color image. If you don't know how to steer your box, I do have a mini course called the Circulatory Skill Set, which explains all of that in very simple, easy to understand language. Trust me, if you do not understand those concepts that are adapted from the Edelman hemodynamics and Doppler chapters in the Understanding Ultrasound Physics textbook, then you will struggle with forming vascular ultrasounds, at least with being accurate in your images. So I will link that mini course in the description box. At the center of the vessel is where you will obtain the best velocities and clearest spectral window. You're going to measure the peak systolic velocity, which is the highest point on the spectral waveform, and then the end diastolic velocity, the lowest point right before the upstroke. And you're gonna make sure to add these measurements to the machine's measurements packet. In the common carotid artery, the waveform should be a mix of high resistive and low resistive flow. Next, we are going to keep the notch pointed towards the patient's head and move a little bit superiorly on the neck to image the mid common carotid artery. Here we're going to do the exact same image in 2D color and pulse wave Doppler. Then we're going to rinse and repeat at the distal common carotid artery. 2D color and pulse wave. Now when you take this pulse wave image of the distal common carotid artery, you are supposed to be a few centimeters from the actual bulb. You don't want to be in the bulb because you will have more of a mixed pattern of flow and more flow reversal. So you want to be a few centimeters, a couple centimeters proximal to that area. Next we're going to look at the proximal internal carotid artery. We had the perfect model for this exam because the patient is myself. I scanned myself for these images and this was the second time that I have recorded this video because the other video was just not enough, not good enough quality. So I wanted to make sure this video had good quality for you guys. So here we are. So stay with me, stay with me. Now, as mentioned before, your transducer should be angled towards the back of the patient's neck, slightly towards the back. As I mentioned before, the ICA will typically be larger and will not have any branches coming off of it. You want to make sure that you're not on the ECA, but on the ICA. Remember, the ICA will be more lateral and the ECA will be more medial. Also, the waveform will be different. Again, I'll get into that. I like to include a little bit of the bulb in my image to demonstrate any plaque. Of course, I don't have any plaque, but if there is some, you want to demonstrate that. That is what the vascular surgeons will be paying attention to. Next, we're going to image in color Doppler and then pulse wave. Here, your sample gate should not be too close to the bulb because Again, that's where you're going to get a lot of flow reversal in that area. You want all of your flow, if this is a normal carotid, it should be above the baseline, not below. You want a clean spectral window if you can. One way to differentiate the internal carotid from the external carotid is the internal carotid, the waveform will sound like a washing machine. Here I'm going to attempt sound effects. It's going to sound like shh. That was actually kind of good. I'm proud of myself. And you see this waveform, this is low resistive. The brain is not resisting the blood flow. The brain wants the blood flow. So there should be no stops along this waveform. The flow should be constant above the baseline. Now, according to the IAC, if there is no plaque, and the velocity is less than 180 centimeters per second, then the internal carotid artery is considered to be normal. 
within normal limits. Next, we'll move superiorly on the neck to the mid internal carotid artery. We're going to take 2D color and pulse wave Doppler. Now for the mid, you will probably, as, as you see in this transducer diagram, you will have to angle a little bit because the direction of the internal carotid artery will be changing. It will be coursing more posterior and it might be turning at the same time. Next, we will move distally behind the patient's ear to the distal ICA. Here you can see mine pretty well. Not everyone is like that though. Usually I will angle upwards and underneath the patient's jaw to obtain to visualize the distal ICA. Now I never look for the ICA, the distal ICA rather, without color Doppler on. Color Doppler helps very much to identify and locate the distal internal carotid artery. So I put the color Doppler on first, then I'll take the color Doppler off my image, take the 2D, put the color Doppler back on, then take my pulse wave Doppler image. Make sure that your Doppler angle is parallel to the vessel walls, especially at the distal ICA, because like I said, the ICA is turning, changing direction, and diving deeper. So you will have to adjust that beam, adjust that angle correct, and the sample gate to make sure that you are in the right, using the right angle and in the right position on that vessel. If you do not do this, you can very easily demonstrate an inaccurate velocity. Next, let's move on to the ECA. We'll, we will be moving a little bit proximally on the neck, but we'll still be on the upper part of the neck. This time you'll be angled towards the face. You want to make sure that you are on the vessel with the branches coming off of it. This again will be the narrower of the two bifurcating vessels, generally speaking. Take note, not everything is 100% with the carotid arteries. To make sure you're on the correct vessel, you can Doppler it and, you're, and make sure that you're getting the one with the high resistive flow that we'll see later. So you'll take the 2D image, then the color Doppler image. Here you can see the beginning of a branch coming off my ECA and then the pulse wave. You should have a high upstroke and then it should come down for the end diastolic flow. Many times there will be no end diastolic flow or it will be very, very low velocity. It should not be way up here like with the ECA. And this is different than the ICA because the face does not need constant blood flow like the brain. It gives short bursts at a time. Short bursts of flow and then it trickles down. Short bursts of flow, then it trickles down. The base, so it's the constant up and down, high upstrokes. Let me not mess this up. Lastly, let's look at the vertebral artery. We're going to be back where we started, near the base of the neck, with the notch pointed towards the, towards the patient's head. First, find the common carotid artery, then angle the probe. You don't need to slide the probe, just angle the probe. Typically, you don't need to slide it towards the patient's back of the neck. The vertebral arteries can be very tricky to find, so don't be upset if you do not find them immediately. Sometimes it will still take me a few minutes to find it. You will usually see the vertebral artery paired with the vertebral vein. However, you don't want to assume that the red is the artery and the blue is the vein. Sometimes the artery can demonstrate reverse flow and it will show a blue depending on your box steering and your color map. You should see portions of the vessel as they run through the vertebrae. So you're going to take your 2D image, then your color Doppler image, and then your pulse wave Doppler. It will typically be a low, lower resistive waveform. Under 125 centimeters per second, according to the ISC, is considered normal. Now, for the left carotid system, which I mentioned, when the only thing that is different when you will do that, because I'm not going to go through the whole protocol, but when you do that system, when you get to the bifurcation, 
typically the ECA will be on the left side of your screen and then the ICA will be on the right side. You will still have to check off those other boxes, see which one fits most of those boxes for each of the bifurcating vessels to see if they are actually the vessels that you think that they are. These are the links from which I obtained all those diagrams that were on the left side of the screen. I really hope this video was helpful and please let me know if you like this style of video demonstration and let me know what other types of exams you want me to explain how to perform. If you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Bye.